Hi everybody, Max Wright here from BitShares TV, and uh, I'm pretty excited about today's guest, a uh, gentleman who uh, known on the on the uh, forums as Bit Sapphire, um, creating a, a product which I think is very exciting for BitShares called Moonstone. And uh, talents, how are you helping? How are you going today? Just fine. Awesome, awesome. So why don't you start off uh, perhaps and uh, give us a little bit of background? Maybe when did you first become aware of BitShares? Why did you like? Bit shares. How did you get involved? And then maybe we can move on to the, some of the exciting things you've got in the pipeline. Oh wow! Um, I actually stumbled upon Bit shares way early. Um, that was when uh, ByteMaster published his first rough white paper on the Bitcoin Talk forum. Um, that was, I think, almost two years ago. And then I just kept up with the thread from time to time. And then the forum came up. Um, he started putting up bounties for side and other stuff. Wanted to have the bounty approach. Uh, we were just starting up our business back then, and we said, you know what, we're going to apply to that. Um, it didn't quite work out for us for you know business reasons and some other stuff. But since then, we essentially were you know on top of bid shares since. So you've been involved in the community for a long time. I think you actually moderate or run the the bid shares talk forum, um, yeah. and then you now. So you, you started a company in the meantime. Can you maybe share with us a little bit about what that company does, what its skill set is, and what its mission is? Yep, yep. So we're Bit Sapphire. Uh, we started the company back when the Bit prefix wasn't that that a big deal. <laughs> uh, but um, the, our main focus is essentially blockchain consulting, and uh, our tagline is we build crypto startups. Um, when people ask us what we do, we, assent, we say uh, we're teams as a service. It's easy on, in, enough to understand. Um, so we, we do two things, really. Um, it's one, uh, consulting for clients and partnering up with them, uh, doing all the technical side of things. Um, more often than not, we also become, uh, pra for all practical purposes, the CTO of, of the new startup companies. Um, and the second thing we do is um, internal development of products, always um, looking at what the partners and the ecosystem need. Right. So instead of building one specific thing for one, one specific partner, um, we build something that we see that essentially all, all partners and the whole ecosystem require at that specific point in time. And this is how Moonstone started. Right, gotcha. So here's what it, what it appears from the outside looking in, just looking at the website, and something I was really, really impressed with um, is you posted a video just recently, uh, and it was like a crowdfunding video for, uh, for the Moonstone project. And what jumped out at me immediately was um, the quality of the video. And I just thought, because there's, I think BitShares at a really interesting point, there's only a couple of uh, little pieces of the puzzle missing before I think BitShares just explodes in popularity and use. And one of those components is a really, is just being cool, being slick, the user experience being awesome, um, it's being intuitive. And so I saw this video and I thought, wow, in the entire BitShares ecosystem, just from this video, I can see that uh, you know this, this team have a really good eye for design. And then I went to the website and I looked at a lot of the staff and it appeared to me, it seems like you know, half the staff are like user experience and, uh, and graphics and all these kinds of things. And that's when I got really excited by, by Moonstone. I've only think I, I think I've seen one screenshot. I'm not sure if you've released too much of your design yet. Um, yeah. But uh, from what I, what I can see is this, uh, this, a part of the reason this really excites me, the whole Moonstone thing, is that it seems to be very, very much grounded in user experience, clean, cool, something that people want to be a part of. And uh, I think that's really, really important. Is, have I got that kind of, is that accurate so far? Well, uh, thank you for noticing it. <laughs> it takes a lot of uh, energy and manpower to, to make it look that way. Um, so we're 17 people now, um, which is mind-boggling. Um, we've grown to that within less than a year. We started out just two people. Nice. Um, and we're completely bootstrapped. Um, and location isn't uh, that good either. I mean, it's not Silicon Valley, it's coastal, it's southeastern Europe. Um, but I guess we, we used our handicap to our advantage in each and every way, you know, lower costs. Um, a lot more math-based uh, education, that kind of stuff. Um, and um, so out of the 17, we have four designers. The rest are all developers. Right, okay. 
right? And um, we have, have uh, some very specific internal processes. So the tagline is we build crypto startups and the difference between a traditional development shop and uh, or an agency and what we do. Um, the, we, we like to say uh, is that um, we build for the market rather than for the client, right? Um, normally, the client has all kinds of crazy ideas. Um, more often than not, they're not really grounded in reality. But um, if we see that there is uh, at least a hint of a good market idea, like something that could become a really good startup, um, we, we, re we normally uh, want to work together with them. And the first thing we do is a one to two week, week zero, which we call, which is where we you know, just lock ourselves in with the client in a house or room or something. And then we brainstorm and have a specific you know, process how to get to the actual core idea. Then we have another two to five weeks of user interviews and um, rapid prototyping and design and user testing. So by the time five to six weeks in we, where we actually start developing, we've probably already done, for Moonstone specifically, over 150 user interviews and user testing sessions. Right, so um, before even starting to build Moonstone and really any of our products, um, we've already done tests where we see, you know, where do the users click? Do they actually know what that is? Uh, should we name it differently, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And we really pride ourselves with that. Yeah, and just from what I've seen, it absolutely shows. I imagine that would be very, very expensive to produce and do all those, that testing, but I think uh, it will really reveal itself in, in the product. We are currently redoing the front end based on the new stuff we did on the back end. Uh, that is because we just partnered up with uh, MetaExchange.info. Um, you've probably heard of them. Yes. They're doing some awesome stuff. Yeah. Really great guys. Um, we're going to do the fundraiser, well, the crowdfunder uh, with their software. They're currently adapting some, some parts of it for, for our specific needs. And they're also going to be integrated with us from day one. So um, small uh, conversions and you know, uh, changing from, from bit shares to Bitcoin and vice versa is going to be possible from within the wallet. And therefore, we're changing a few parts of the user experience and front end too. No, okay, so let me, let's backtrack a little bit here. Maybe perhaps give me the vision and what is it that you want Moonstone to be? You've mentioned Bitcoin and you've mentioned BitShares. It's going to be holding all those. Start from the beginning and give me the vision for what you want. Sure. So we, we've already planned uh, up to version 3 of Moonstone. Uh, this is going to be version 1 or 0 0.9, however we call it. Um, the, the initial version is going to be a BitShares wallet. We're already working internally to have it uh, also be a Bitcoin wallet, so you can have both kinds of tokens on there. Really, for the paid assets and user-issued assets and all of that can also be on there. Um, uh, let's see whether we can actually achieve that for version one. Um, the the long-term vision, there's this huge um, Bitcoin community out there now. And if you look at the comments and what they envision Bitcoin to be, that's essentially bit shares. Right. Um, uh, or, you know, they're, they're kind of mistaking the, the, the forest for the tree. Right. They, they saw Bitcoin first. And now BitShares came along, which has essentially everything that they, they want to need, but they can't really get into it, you know, for a hundred reasons, really. Um, if you look at the Bitcoin ecosystem, we've noticed that the primary initial driver of Bitcoin itself were... Uh, uh, stocks and stock-like, uh, you know, websites, um, primarily for um, mining companies, right? And that was when uh, the really first large-scale use case of Bitcoin became apparent. And the fact that Bitcoin is so extremely successful for being used for crowdfunding also sh shows a lot, right? What is it? Uh, the third biggest uh, crowdfunder ever was made with Bitcoin exclusively. That really, I mean, shows a lot. Um, and uh, we've seen so far in the forums also that everybody wants to issue their user issued assets um, for all kinds of, you know, financial or non financial instruments. You know, anything from in game tokens to, uh, you know, artist coins to uh, stocks, bonds, and whatnot, you know, brand tokens. 
Um, so, uh, however, in order to do that legally in most countries, you need to adhere to KYC, you need gateway infrastructure, etc. And most gateways couldn't really do a good user interface. I mean, if you look at most Bitcoin exchanges, they look really bad. Um, and we want this to be something where the average user out there wants to use it and isn't scared off, which is, you know, where we come in. Um, once uh, the average user starts using uh, our wallet sim due to the simple design and it doesn't look scary and things are denominated in, let's say, US dollars or bit US dollars, um, the next logical step for them is to want to you know, uh, be part of the, these IOUs or user-issued assets or stocks in the future, all legal, which we want to be. Uh, to do that, KYC is hugely important, um, but KYC is also the biggest hurdle, right? And the biggest centralization point for the gateways. So our goal is, in the long term, over the next six to 12 months, to uh, also um, integrate um, uh, uh, user identification module, kind of like Coinbase or, uh, you know, these exchanges where you upload your personal documents, you know, all, everything you agree to. And then we essentially become like the very sign or SSL of people. So with the one click, you can, you can sign up to an external gateway and start trading legally within a whitelist stocks um, or bonds or, you know, actual company stock and actual company bonds and th there's just such a huge need out there for that it's amazing right uh, and i i actually think we all think of the company that this is probably the biggest initial use case for bit shares right bit usd you know bit assets and everything else that's incredible and it's it's amazing um, but it's not what will get bit shares off the ground, not in our opinion. It just requires too much liquidity. There's too much of a chicken and egg problem. But for um, there is no chicken and egg problem. The only chicken and egg problem is the identity verification and smooth transition from one gateway to another. And we want to solve that from within the interface. You go back to something earlier that you said. So you're you're shooting for, although you're not can't 100% promise that in version one of the wallet, in addition to holding bit shares and all the bit assets and the user issued assets, you think that you are hoping for and shooting for getting Bitcoin in there as well. So people will be able people will be able to hold Bitcoin tokens inside the the wallet. Can't yeah, guarantee um, that you're shooting for it. Yeah. So I mean, we already have prototypes internally. Um, obviously, we didn't do the Bitcoin wrap and everything from scratch. Um, we're using the copay implementation. Um, it's the BitPay guys uh, built their own uh, multi-sig uh, Angular uh, light wallet um, for Bitcoin and they open source pretty much everything. I think everything. And we're uh, using their backend and their Bitcoin wrapper. And uh, so far it's working pretty nicely but, you know, considering that you're dealing with something that has value here, we don't want to put something out there that <laughs> frees people's funds. So we need a lot more testing. All right. Okay. That's all. That's all awesome. You mentioned you have a roadmap there for versions two and versions three. Would you like to walk through that a little bit? Yeah. So version one is hopefully putting out um, the uh, basic bit shares functionality out there. Um, with an MIT license if we reach the fundraiser goal of 130,000 US dollars in Bitcoin, bit shares, bit USD. Um, if we don't reach that goal, we'll still make the front end uh, uh, GPL3 license. So it's still open source, but uh, companies won't be able to uh, take the code and uh, modify it uh, for their for profit reasons. Um, we actually want companies to take on as much of our code base as possible and start building an ecosystem around bit shares. Right. Um, there's not enough uh, code base on top of bit shares, though bit shares itself is being developed quite nicely. But in order to build that ecosystem more easily, you need the, the second layer on top of it to the traditional web layer, I'd say. Yeah, that's been my and, observation as well. It seems like the, the core developers are doing a phenomenal job 
what they've produced with BitShares is mind blowing. It seems to be like a years ahead of anything else in the crypto space. And it's, but it's the application layer that sits on top of that that seems to be lacking, which is where I, I'm noticing a lot of guys coming into that space in the last few months. But I think Moonstone seems to be ahead of everybody there as well. Yeah, I mean, we hope so. <laughs> uh, but even if we succeed uh, if, if with our fundraiser, we, we want this to succeed in such a way that um, the tide lifts all boats, right? Mm -hmm. Because um, if all these other services um, become better, at least in some aspects, either through our code base or the video quality or the designs, you know, really anything, um, that should contribute to making bit shares and bit assets and overall, probably DPoS-based DAX a lot better in the eye of the general public, right? And in theory, it should also in, uh, increase the, uh, the valuation of all these DAX. Yeah. Uh, so that's the roadmap for version one. Um, you should be able to do everything you do currently with the BitShares wallet, just with a thin client with, with Moonstone. Sorry, you're, that's including voting in and out delegates, that's including the exchange operations. You, you plan on doing all of that in version one of Moonstone? Yes. Okay. Uh, so we've, we're very proud that we just put the uh, universal transaction builder in Angular JavaScript. We, we custom made it, uh, so we had to port it from C++ over. Um, and that wasn't easy. <laughs> There's practically no documentation uh, on this stuff on BitShares. They were just coding up like crazy, and you can see it. There's almost no comments anywhere, but the code is really clean, right? That is a combination you rarely see. <laughs> right. Normally, if there are no comments, the code isn't that good either. Uh, fortunately enough, we over the last one and a half months, we were able to you know decode enough of it to 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 convert it. So V2 will definitely have. Uh, Bitcoin support and integration. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're building um, Moonstone in such a way that it's more of a plug-in infrastructure. Um, so we've been already approached by several other startups, um, which is amazing. I think five other startups and projects who wanted to integrate with us. And um, so after seeing, you know, that everybody wants to do that essentially. Uh, we said, okay, let's let's do this more modular and more like extension based, where you can actually install something like a plugin or an extension within Moonstone. We hope that that's going to be ready for version two. Um, one example is that um, there's a more um, a project out there that a team that wants to do a more advanced uh, uh, exchange interface, kind of like Bloomberg. Um, which is obviously a lot more complicated than doing a user-friendly simple exchange. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, why not have that as an extension? Right. right? Um, because we don't see that that's the, ad, the, the, the value proposition of our internal team. Um, but why not make it possible for somebody else to really specialize in that and use the network effect that hopefully we will come out of Moonstone. Um, Medax change itself is going is going to be an extension essentially which is in our case going to be uh, in there so that's for version two uh, for version two we also want to do the back end uh, more modular in such a way that we can add uh, more blockchains more easily um, you may know I don't know it's probably a bad example but uh, uh, these um, crypto exchanges that are out there exclusive crypto exchanges whenever you want to get a blockchain on there and you and you token uh, they have these elaborate voting processes and social media processes and whatnot, you know, essentially begging them to get this new token on there. Uh, with our setup, um, the actual developers of the blockchains could just write a uh, thin client wrapper for their blockchains and hopefully enough just, you know, add a few snippets of code to our you know, uh, server side uh, backend and uh, then we would be supporting that blockchain immediately without them actually having to ask us. Right. Um, that's our hope for version two. Uh, um, the roadmap for version two is uh, three to four months release after uh, the release of version one. And we didn't right. uh, we didn't talk about this. When do you think the version one will be released? Version one uh, will be 
tentatively, right? This is a tentative date released 30 days after the fundraiser starts. The fundraiser starts, I think, in 16 or 17 days. We actually had to postpone it for a week um, due to the uh, meta exchange changes we had to to do for our specific needs. Okay. So that means that uh, hopefully in one and a half months the vault will be released. Module three, do you want to do you want to get head down that far? Or is that too far in in, in the future? Uh, that's really adding the full blown ID verification. Okay. But um, that's. Um, so just like the exchanges of Coinbase, um, our plan is to have an ID verification set up there where you can upload any documents you want or require. Um, we have then people over here uh, checking them just like you know Kraken does and Coinbase does and whatnot. Obviously, we're still talking to lawyers and companies and other you know people and companies that can help us set, up, set that up because it requires actually quite a lot of manual manpower to do that, uh, but once we do that, which would be, by the way, free, you could upload your documents and get your ID verified for free. Uh, you could just like on Facebook or with Google Plus, click on a gateway or website or really anybody that accepts our verification process and start the KYC process from that. So we, we give them either the just the go-ahead that this person is verified with us and we trust that that person is really that person. Mm -hmm. um, or um, in, more, in some more elaborate jurisdictions, uh, we would also allow for them to have access to the documents, um, which might be the case in some places. And I think that the gateways in the future will probably be primarily um, around, you know, the business model will be about uh, adhering to the specific jurisdiction, you know, knowing everything about the law in that jurisdiction, doing everything by the book, and they wouldn't have their own order book, they would do everything on bit shares, and they, they wouldn't actually do their own identity verification, they would just go faster and use us. Um, that's our long-term goal, and that would be pretty darn awesome. Uh, man, just such a good vision there. I'm excited by everything you're talking about and the, t the, the time frames are equally impressive. I'm amazed these things are so near. I can't wait to uh, be involved and have these tools to start uh, sharing and promoting uh, bid shares. Um, you mentioned, so there's two topics I want to go to. I'll let you decide which one we want to go to first. One is I'd like to talk about your, um, your crowdfunding. Uh, and the second thing is I want to talk about some of your other projects that you're doing with the bit shares blockchain. I know you're involved in music and some others. Let's, why don't we start with um, the crowdfunding? Why don't we talk sure. a little bit about that? What have you got planned for that? What are your targets and what are you offering investors? So the crowdfunder will start in 16 or 17 days. Um, well, by the time people watch this video, it's probably going to be different. That's true. Uh, just go on moonstone.io and you can see the countdown and uh, sign up to the newsletter um, if you want to get the latest news and updates. Um, uh, the crowdfunder, as far as we know, we're probably the first crowdfunder to ever do what, what, what we're doing currently. Um, we're converting um, Bitcoin, uh, BTS and BitUSD to the dollar equivalent on the spot. And um, uh, based on what the dollar equivalent at the time when you send the token as a, as a donor was um, we sent to um, a public key of your choice, right? Uh, uh, on BitShares, a uh, Moonstone uh, user issued asset. Uh, so for every dollar worth of crypto tokens you send us, we send you 1.15 Moonstone tokens. 1.15, that's important to remember. <laughs> Uh, that means that um, uh, th that is very interesting because it means that as a donor for the very first time in a crowdfunding campaign, it's uh, hypothetically possible through the delegate setup uh, within anywhere between five to 30 months, potentially, 30 months is the cutoff date, um, to uh, get um, your donation plus 15% back. All right, so right. The, goal, the goal is that you, you uh, issue this asset called the Moonstone asset, uh, I give you a dollar, you give me 1.15 of these Moonstone assets. And then the goal is that Moonstone will buy those assets back 
uh, at, at, full, at, a, at a dollar value. So I'll be able to sell the dollar 15 Moonstone token back to you for a dollar and 15 bit USD. Exactly. But we're not doing that through Moonstone itself, but we're doing that through the delegate infrastructure. So the wallet, uh, once you sign up to it, uh, will have uh, uh, opt out uh, five delegate votes. So uh, just like you agree to terms of service, you also agree to automatically voting for five of our delegates on the system, 100% paid delegates. Right. Um, that is opt out. After we got a lot of feedback from the community, we decided it would be better to have it opt out. So you can just you know, untick it and that's done. Um, and uh, then through the 100% of the income of those delegates, you know, after server costs, uh, which is negligible, uh, will be turned into BitUS dollars and on the open market, the order is set for a one-to-one -one ratio, right? So essentially what this means, and this was very important for us, is that the risk taking, right, is individual while if it works and only if it works, um, the, 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 the final payment for the community service is done by the public, by all the bit shares holders. So um, if you believe in Moonstone, you can take the risk individually by donating. And there's also a risk reward scheme essentially of what, 15%. Uh, but the final payment is done by the overall community through the awesome delegate system, right? What this means is that um, we hope this might be in the future a universal setup for this and similar projects where the broader community doesn't actually take any risks with anybody, right? By default, they say no to every project. And by default, they say private donors and private investors in the future, please take on the risk on the free and open market. And you will have, in accordance to that, uh, you know, risk reward scheme somehow right and uh, uh, if it works and only if it works meaning where the risk of the project succeeding and working is zero then the delegates are used for repaying the well repaying uh, the uh, individual risk takers the donors yeah that's it I mean I can I can totally see where you're going with this so for the the proposition for an individual investor is guys, you know, send in uh, for every dollar you send in, we intend to uh, buy back, give you back a dollar and fifteen. The time frame by which we can guarantee that can be done, well, we can't guarantee it. But what we're going to use is we're going to hopefully get some delegates voted in, and the proceeds from that delegate situation will go back to the investors to return their um, their money. Now, if uh, if if Moonstone products or other products or other other parts for other reasons the bit shares um, price goes up significantly, the time frame by which investors will be repaid will get shortened significantly, uh, and yep. vice versa. It could also extend out. So the uh, so for the investor they have an opportunity to make fifteen percent return and the time that, that that part is kind of set but the time frame is what what actually can move for the exactly. shares community uh, if for if you reach the target and I think the target is one hundred thirty thousand U S dollars worth if you yes. reach the target of one hundred thirty thousand U S dollars then you'll be changing the license of the code the Moonstone code is going to be open source no matter what. Uh, but what you'll be doing is changing the license so other for-profit companies can use that and go ahead and create competition to yourself, but also lots of other um, different applications with that. Have I, have I summed that up correctly? Precisely. You put it better than I could ever. Okay. Awesome. That's, a, that's really cool. And I like that you, you mentioned that, that there's an obvious point there that it's a, there's a potential for um, this being a model to move forward for other, um, other people trying to raise money for projects. So that's really cool. Let's kick over now to um, another aspect, which is uh, some other aspects of the BitShares ecosystem, which is music and play. Um, first of all, maybe you just want to give us a little bit of a heads up. What, uh, you mentioned, I think you said you've been approached by five other crypto startups. I'm not sure if you can talk about anything specifically, but we, uh, were those projects with regards to BitShares or were they outside the BitShares system? Which um, companies and startups in the BitShares ecosystem are you working with? And just kind of give me a catch up of those kinds of things. Uh, so two of our best known clients currently, uh, partners, are probably Coinality. We're, we're, we've already built a Coinality.io platform, which is a freelancer 
kind of freelance.com slash Odesk crypto platform with integrated multi-sig escrow. Um, we're very much proud of that. They were one of our first crypto clients slash partners. Um, and uh, the other one is PeerTrax, uh, PeerTrax.com and BitShares Music, Eddie and Cedric. Uh, we've had a very close partnership with them. It's been an amazing ride so far over the last few months. Um, we've just finished their, um, I guess, version 0.5, internal alpha version of PeerTrax. We've also set up the architecture for uh, the BitShares Music blockchain. Um, and uh, we're also planning on some, and uh, in in a few months probably uh, some mobile stuff too. I can't disclose exactly what though. Uh, and uh, those are probably our best known clients to the to the community. But obviously, we're also be just partners, um, official partners. Um, otherwise, we also have the Bitchers forum, um, which was kind of. of interesting how that happened. Um, the guy who initially set up the forum just couldn't keep up with the growth and said, I need somebody, you know, that can actually do this professionally. And uh, we took up the task and uh, yeah, we, we actually pay somebody uh, to look after the forum. <laughs> uh, so the forum so far, considering that we haven't taken any money for it and uh, um, and th there are no uh, ads on it or anything. Uh, it's been pretty much a losing proposition to us, but we're very much against advertisements. Um, so we have an idea of how to put that together to have a sustainable business model on the forum without ads, um, which I think the community will like. But we're first focusing on getting Moonstone out. Um, so those are our two main clients. Uh, we have some other startups and bigger companies for which we do pure consulting. So no development work, just consulting. Mm -hmm. um, we, are, we are kind of in a fascinating position here because we don't have any blockchain product of our own, but we work together with a lot of the industry, um, but focusing on bit shares. Um, and uh, we write some blogs, uh, we're on several forums, um, and now there's so many companies out there who want to use or integrate with blockchains, and they need somebody who's neutral enough and has done enough work with enough projects to give them a good overview, kind of. You know, they're just saying, you know, oh, there's BitShares and Ethereum and Bitcoin and Hyperledger and Ares Industries and <laughs> Tezos and whatnot, and they all have their white papers and everything looks awesome, but what should I do? And we are removed enough from everybody, but still close enough to everybody to give them a more neutral overview of what they actually need. Um, and that's uh, probably the more interesting part of our business now at this point. Uh, as a, as a, so you have you ever um, recommended uh, a blockchain other than BitShares, or has, has BitShares been basically the, your recommendation since? Um, so we, we will prob this would probably be a drift from the initial Moonstone discussion, uh, but um, I think it is just this year now where people actually start to understand what blockchains and consensus are, right? <laughs> Which is fascinating considering that everybody has been doing it. Uh, a blockchain is a data structure which has immutable data and which can run code verifiably on top of that immutable data. And that's pretty much it, right? It's nothing more. Uh, it doesn't, the definition doesn't include whether it's centralized, whether it's decentralized, whether the centralization or decentralization is political or technical, et cetera, et cetera. The consensus la layer of that is a whole other dimension, right? DPoS, proof of work, etc. Uh, that's just a way of doing consensus among uh, parties which don't trust one another and don't know one another. Uh, but there are projects out there that want to use, that want to have uh, immutable, immutable append-only data structures who, where you can run code very externally verifiably on top of. Um, sometimes even in a centralized manner. 
Uh, to give you a specific example, um, there are projects out there. So to give you an example of how, how most server client setups work to, today, when you have a website or application that talks to a server somewhere, it's normally a RESTful API setup uh, and your, your application fully trusts that server, right? If the server lies to you about something, uh, you don't know, you can't know, right? Because the, 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 whether the current state of what you know is true versus what they know is an unknown to you. <laughs> uh, however, with this um, new blockchain setup, even if it's centralized, it is technically possible for the client, meaning your application, to actually verify whether the information you just got is true or not, or, or can be true or not, right? And uh, we're calling it a paranoid client server setup, uh, which there are plenty of large scale industrial uh, setups in the future where a lot of even traditional companies, you know, currently existing companies are very interested in using. Uh, funnily enough, wh whenever somebody says blockchain is the future from, from the current, in, current in industries out there, so not, no crypto industries, what they actually mean isn't that the, these decentralized blockchains are the future. They mean that this specific data structure is the future. So long story short, yes, um, we have recommended other blockchains to specific use cases. Uh, simply because what the added value of BitShares is, is DPoS and is the consensus mechanism, right? However, every single time you need a secure clearing and distributed state change where you don't trust um, the participants of the consensus, DPoS is the way to go in our opinion. Excellent, excellent. Okay, thank you. While you were talking about, hey, that was fascinating. But while you were talking about that, I did think about something else. I want to go back to Moonstone if I can. Uh, what, what is the what's the revenue model? What's the business model behind Moonstone? How are you in, intending to make money with Moonstone long term? So until we get to version three, we don't intend to be break even. This is a startup after all. Um, however, we have sufficient internal resources to. Uh, build Moonstone for some considerable amount of time. Um, you know, having 17 people work on things um, can get you a sufficient margin and being in Southeastern Europe um, makes things considerably cheaper than let's say in the United States. Uh, by version three, we intend to make money, well, to monetize Moonstone through the identity verification service which means that any gateway that uh, wants to have instant verification of, an, of a person essentially pays for that verification. We're almost like a, a funnel for them, right? Um, so uh, there would be a certain per user cost associated to the gateways, which we're guessing is going to be anywhere between five to $25 per user. Is there anything else that you wanted to speak about that I forgot to bring up during this call? Uh, not that I can think of. I just want to stress that even though there seems to be quite a, I wouldn't say letdown, but the community uh, overall is in a different mood right now due to the price and everything. Um, the underlying technology is better than ever. And... Um, other silos, I call them, you know, projects, um, are in our opinion going into some not bad directions, but uh, in, in, in directions which they can't foresee their own future. And um, with this fundraiser, which we're doing, this is essentially going to be the first time, literally, probably in human history, where um, you can create a public good without any risk to the public and without the public being predefined, right? And I think reaching um, our goal by using BitShares and DPoS and the delegate system and the payout system and everything, uh, purely through a free market setup rather than through coercion and still be able to create profitably a, a public good, right? The MIT licensed code base. Um, 
that's probably something we'll be talking about year, in, in, you know, years to come. And I wouldn't be surprised if this becomes the default setup for any crypto startup in the future. Awesome. Very, very exciting. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to chat to you. Um, I'm really excited about the whole moon, moon, uh, sorry, Moonstone project. Moonstone. Yeah. And uh, are there any final words? As you mentioned, go to moonstone.io to um, track down the, um, the, the fundraising. And that launches, we said 16 days. Let's just get a little bit closer on that. I think it's close to uh, maybe April 8th or 9th or so, something around that mark. Uh, that's when the uh, crowdfund goes live. So go to moonstone.io. Um, sign up to the newsletter keep informed about Moonstone love to have you con to contribute to uh, the the whole crowdfunding um, after about April 9th and then that's tentatively scheduled 30 days after that the uh, first iteration of the Moonstone wallet should be out and the Moonstone wallet is going to be a desktop client or a, a, a phone app or both what's it going to be? It's going to be a desktop and w uh, web application so just as uh, the current BitShares wallet is essentially a web application with a wrapper on your computer. Uh, we're going to work the same way. So you can then also go to moonstone.io and use a thin client in, in the browser without having to trust us, or you can download the application and use it on your computer. However, we've designed it in such a way through the Google material design that um, right after the, on, uh, the mobile wallet, which would essentially look the same. So you, you cut out just a second there, but I think you, I believe you said right after the desktop client is live, it's a very easy transition to kick into a, a mobile app. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Taylor, thank you so much for catching me up on the whole Moonstone project. Uh, I'm fascinated by it all and I'm super excited about it. Um, look forward to speaking to you another time. Thanks for being with us. Thank you so much. Have a great day.